The shift in consumer spending habits is being reflected in the flow of trade. CNBC has been tracking the supply chain, and according to companies surveyed, current manufacturing orders out of China are reportedly down as much as 20 to 30 percent. CNBC's senior editor, Lorian Loraco, is here on set with me. She's got the very latest. And where are logistics managers seeing this pullback, Lorianne? They're seeing the pullback in lumber, in home decor. They're seeing it in furniture and even in the big appliances. Wow. Yeah. And where is this in particular? Does that hit home then? In, in, terms, in of, terms of the supply chain, we're talking China, maybe Vietnam. Yeah. So in terms of when you're looking at the furniture aspect, that's the, that's the intra-Asia trade lane, which is Vietnam and China and Malaysia. OK, so tell me more about this. We've seen home construction like lumber, which we know. Is it home appliance system DIY? So it feels like that is where this originated and where it's now spreading from. What, what are, would be the next shoe to drop? Well, the next shoe to drop is like, are they going to cut back on apparel and footwear, right? But they're not. And that's where the strength and that's where you're seeing the strength. And, you know, I spoke with the National Retail Federation on it, as well as the American Footwear uh, Association saying, are you seeing this pullback or, you know, my folks are not seeing it in the supply chain. They said, no, people are buying clothes to go for travel, for the experiences, the things that we're spending money on now. Every, everyone already bought a dishwasher and a refrigerator. So the curious thing is when Target, Walmart, or some of the others are telling us they have an inventory problem, when you read the details, it looks like it's certain kind of um, idiosyncratic categories, like, you know, fleece sleepwear, for instance, or certain types of summer categories, things they're maybe packing up to just use next year. Why aren't we seeing a bigger impact in terms of demand for apparel and other imported items there? Because it really depends on what they're buying. You know, like if you go into, a, you know, a certain store, you may see certain items that you're like, mm it's not that cute or you're not really want to you know open up that wallet but if you are going on vacation you might want to get that new windbreaker you might want to get a new pair of like hiking shoes so it's that discretionary spending did what they buy hit the mark on the consumer where what are you getting in terms of the sense overall from these figures you know if i were you know jerome powell what is this telling me it's telling you that people are not are being more selective in their in their dollars. You're spending more money on the gas tank, so you got to figure out, okay, if I'm really going to spend fifty dollars on something, what am I going to buy? So it's it's that it's that yin and yang where you're just not spending freely. You you're really thinking twice. The stuff coming in now is the stuff we're going to be talking about for back to school, but even more already for the holidays, right? Absolutely. I, I ch actually checked the bills of lading on Import Genius, and we're already seeing Christmas trees coming in, Halloween costumes. It's, it's all coming in right now, which is regular. This is seasonal, so this is already expected. Are they doing the same amount of seasonal, more or less? I mean, I can't imagine being somebody who runs a Home Depot or a smaller store and trying to figure out how much of this inventory, and trying to figure out what shape the consumer is going to be in between inflation, recession, massive rate hikes, changing preferences. I mean, how would you possibly figure this one out? You know, it's hard. I, I recently spoke with the CEO of Tractor Supply about this because everything's truncated. And so he started looking back, you know, when it came to various things in the supply chain about like six or nine months ago. So you just have to kind of look at what you're buying, like, okay, I'm going to look at the higher priced items. Is it okay to put this in? If there's another item where maybe it's kind of squishy, you don't know if a consumer is going to buy it, you hold back on that. So they're really kind of picking and choosing as they move forward because it used to be six months to plan ahead. Now they're looking at maybe three months. Oh, wow. So n does any of this tell you recession yet? Anything like we've seen in prior downturns? When I, when I did speak with the CEO, he said that he's seeing inflationary pressures at least till next year this time. Hmm. So he thinks that, that we're going to see inflationary pressures over the course of the next 12 months. I think it really depends on the consumer, how much money you make, as well as how much you know, you're willing to spend in, in parsing all those dollars. And on top of everything else, we have, as we talked about a moment ago, labor shortages and yeah. pressures. There's a major labor contract at the West Coast ports that's coming up, right? What, are we, what should we expect there? Well, we already know, based on uh, a, a previous announcement, that they're not going to make the deadline. Uh, the, the labor negotiations, which expire at the end of this month. But they did say, don't worry, we're not going to be striking, don't fear. But because of this, you have severe congestion. We have a new supply chain heat map for you. And you literally see the congestion building up on the East Coast. Now, this was expected. I've been on here before talking about you have seen that flow of trade moving. But, you know, thankfully, these ports on the East Coast are able to move the product out faster versus the West Coast. 
but at the Port of Oakland, you have one terminal that your import containers are waiting almost 24 days wow. to get through the port. So there is a lot to kind of wrap your arms around in the logistics world.